Today I'm going to be reviewing the Cobra 12 volt 220 volt power inverter. It is a 2500 watt inverter, model number CPI 2550. And I'll also be including a, uh, a brief review of the uh, Cobra cables, 4 gauge cables, 10 foot 4 gauge cables, that they recommend to be used with this inverter. I got uh, what I thought was a killer deal at the time on this, and uh, I'm going to take a look at it and see if I still feel that way after this review. But uh, I had uh, three major uh, requirements um, that I was looking for when I bought this. One, I wanted something that was at least 1500 watts, um, so I was looking at inverters between 1500 and uh, 3000. Two, I wanted it to have a no load power draw of uh, half an amp or less preferably, something very low. That way if you have it connected and turned on for a long period of time it doesn't drain the battery. And three, I wanted it to have a high surge capability. You'll notice on this box it says 5000 watts peak, 2500 continuous. But uh, because this is an inexpensive consumer grade inverter I can pretty much guarantee that 5000 watt peak is there just for advertising and it is actually incapable of doing much of anything over 2500 watts. I'll be demonstrating that, but uh, that is pretty typical of consumer grade inverters. And that's not to say anything bad about the Cobra brand itself, that's just the way that these consumer grade inverters work. Um, I'm also skeptical of 2500 watts continuous, because getting 2500 watts out of a 12 volt battery is just about impossible. That really isn't a realistic rating, but I'm going to be taking a look at that as well. Here's the back of the box, there's a little bit more information on it. They have uh, some electrical specifications. 2500 watts, 5000 peak, output waveform, modified sine wave, and we'll be taking a look at that. Uh, modified sine wave is again pretty typical of these. Really it's just a slightly improved square wave. <clears throat> 100 volt, 115 volts AC RMS, plus or minus 5%. I have my doubts about that. We'll take a look at it. 22 amps output current, uh, 60 hertz, plus or minus 2. Uh, that should be adequate for basically all applications except running clocks but nobody really uses analog clocks anymore, so who cares. Input voltage, uh, that's just a matter of your battery. Low voltage alarm at 10.5 volts. Uh, that may be a little bit annoying because most batteries will have an internal resistance that's high enough for that low voltage alarm to sound when they're under load all the time. But uh, you'll need very good cables to avoid that from happening. And I'm happy to see that the low voltage cutoff is 9.5 volts. 9.5 volts should be low enough that it won't uh, turn itself off whenever you give it a heavy load. And this is one of the big things that I was looking for. Less than one half amp, no load input current. They have uh, two fans on here. Uh, you can't see them in these pictures, but there's two fans on them, and uh, they're supposedly temperature and load controlled. So we'll see how that works. It has a, a two year warranty. I don't know how much that's really worth. It's not like I'm gonna mail this thing out. Uh, they give a, a table of some different wattages for different appliances. Uh, seems pretty useless to me. You should know what your appliances use. It looks like it's pretty well packaged in here. It came with this uh, styrofoam packing on both ends. That should keep it relatively safe from any uh, shock and transportation. Um, this is what it looks like, on the outside at least. Looks like it has a couple of cooling fans on here. I do not recognize the brand on it. Looks like some cheap Chinese brand, but I shouldn't be surprised. It has uh, a couple little, a couple different uh, lugs for connecting up to two different batteries. So you can connect two batteries without splicing cables. That's a nice feature to have. And if you really do plan on using the full 2500 watt rating, you're going to need more than one battery, uh, unless you have something that's enormously massive, bigger than an auto battery. It has a grounding lug on it. Most people don't use that. You probably should. I'm likely not going to use it either. It has a little bar graph here for load. I don't know how useful or accurate that'll be three outlets. I'm sure they're just connected in parallel, so I could put a power strip on it and have eight more outlets. doesn't really matter how many you have. Yeah, power switch with a remote option. I don't have the remote, but it's there. Some uh, uh, place for the air to flow through for cooling, and it looks pretty scary inside, so I'm going to uh, open it up and take a look. Not so sure about that. It has these uh, four hold downs on here where you can secure it to your uh, your vehicle or whatever application you have. Um, a lot of people like to put these in their work trucks or in their RVs. If you do that, I would highly recommend using some sort of rubber rubber feet on here, some sort of shock absorber. 
because uh, these are just hard plastic and uh, I don't really think this would survive very long in that sort of environment without some sort of isolation but uh, it's definitely heavy feels pretty well built so I'm okay with the looks on the outside of it I'm uh, gonna take a look inside though because I'm pretty curious caution do not open not user serviceable they're gonna have to do better than that to keep me out this is what most sensible people do right avoid the warranty before they even power it up for the first time Well, there it is with the, uh, the cover removed. I'll bring you in for a closer look.